Next, we're going to be looking at using variables and how they are affected by scope. So SAS supports two types of variables, local variables and global variables. By default, all variables that are defined outside of the selector are considered global variables. And so far, those are the only types of variables that we've been working with. A global variable can be accessed from anywhere within our style sheet. Local variables, however, are those which are declared inside a selector. So I'm going to show you how these differ and how you can use each one within your project. Here's an example of a global variable being declared. You can see that I have a variable called main color. I'm assigning it to be blue, and then I'm simply calling it in some different declarations. So here is an example of a local variable. Once again, I have a variable called main color that's being defined to being blue, and I'm using main color as a background color for my header. And then here on my paragraph, I'm using the exact same name, main color, but I'm assigning it to a value of teal. And then I'm calling the color property to have a value of main color. What's going to happen is once this is rendered out, my paragraphs are going to actually display with a teal color. And this is because I'm redefining the variable inside the p tag and I'm giving it scope. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in our file. The file that we're going to be working from should be familiar to you. It just has some slight modifications, but it's a basic page. I'm linking out to my Google fonts. I'm linking out to font awesome. I'm linking to my variable 2.css file, which is a new CSS file that we're rendering via SAS. I have a div with an ID of container that wraps around everything. I have a header that contains an H1. I have an article tag that contains an H1, a paragraph, and then three divs that have the classes of box and one, two, three. And each of these divs contains a H3 heading, and the first one also contains a link tag. The other ones just contain some text without being wrapped inside of anything else. And then I have another article with a class of special that has an H1 and a paragraph, and I have a footer. Here's my starting SAS file. Again, I have some variables that are similar to what we looked at before. I have a headline and a body font variable. I have a base size font, a line height. I have my primary colors of blue, gray, and the off-white. And then I have some spacing variables. And I'm using these throughout, so you can see where I'm specifying all of the variables. I've actually consolidated my code down and used variables for many of the elements within my file. And currently my file looks like this in the browser. Okay, so we're going to jump in and we're going to learn about scope as we modify this page. I'm going to come down here to where I've declared the rules for the box class and I'm using nesting so that I can get box one, box two, and box three, and I'm simply setting their background colors currently all to the primary color. Now before I get into the colors and the boxes, I'm going to declare a couple of new rules that I need for this document. So I'm going to nest a rule for H3s. These will be H3s that are inside of the box divs, and I'm going to set them to have a background color, and I'll give them a little bit of margin and padding. Now the margin values that I want to use are going to encapsulate some negative numbers. And the reason that I want to use some negative numbers here is because I want to pull the heading so that it goes right to the edge of the box. I am going to add some padding here. And for the padding, we're going to use our small space variable. So what this is going to do is it's going to create five pixels of padding all the way around. So if we save this and look at our document, you can see that now my headings are going to exist as they are right now. The negative spacing that I specified are pulling the padding out. If I didn't have negative spacing here, if I just delete this rule temporarily and save this, you can see that these are going to be inset. So I don't want them to be inset like this. I want them to appear near the top and I want the kind of off white background to go all the way to the edges. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to have this negative spacing. Well, these negative spacing values, five, 10 and 10 
coincide with my variables that I have for small space and medium space. So can we use our variables with these negative numbers? Well, let's check it out. If I go ahead here and replace the negative five with small space, and we save and we refresh, you can see that now it reverts back to what we had before. So that appears that it is working quite well. I'll go ahead and I'm going to add the variables for the negative 10 and the positive 10. So this can use my medium space, and that's a variable, so I'll need to incorporate the dollar sign. And then I'm going to just go ahead and paste that in again using the positive number. So if we save and we refresh, we don't actually get the same results. You can see that some things have gone wonky. And if we look at what's happening right here, if we inspect on our H3 element, you can see that it's rendering out as negative 15 pixels. So where's that coming from, that negative 15 pixels? Well, what's happening is, again, remember I told you that using SAS, you can perform mathematical calculations. So it's actually adding the five pixels of small space to the five pixels of medium space and giving us a negative 15 pixels. What I really want is I want it to be negative five for the top and I want it to be negative 10 for the right and the left and then positive 10 for the bottom. In order to accomplish this, if we simply surround the second value inside of parentheses and we save, you'll notice that now the page is rendering correctly and now I get negative five, negative 10, and positive 10. So in this case, I'm going to have to use parentheses so that this is going to render in the correct way. We'll be talking more about these mathematical calculations a little bit later on in the course, but I did want to introduce you to that since this is something that I'm using in this particular exercise. I'm going to just make myself a few rules for my footer, so I'm just gonna text align center. I'm setting the text color to my blue, and for the paragraph, I'm adding some, a font size of medium space, which will actually give me 10 pixels. So even though I've defined this as space in the name, I can apply it to anything. So if we come back here and we refresh our page, you'll now see that the footer is smaller, it's centered, and the text is appearing as blue. Now I'm ready to talk about the global and local scope. So what we're going to do is we're going to be altering the colors of the three boxes. And I'm going to do this by incorporating a new variable. So inside my first box right here, I'm going to define a value for primary color. And remember that primary color is one of the variables that we actually defined up here. So primary color is already defined as a blue color. I'm now going to redefine it, but only inside of box one. So inside of box one, I'm specifying primary color, and we're gonna set this to a hex value here. So we're gonna specify that this is going to be an orange color here. And now in the background color, we're gonna leave our definition as RGB primary color and at 50%. So previously, this box one was displaying with a blue color. If I save this now and we refresh, you're going to see that box one now changes to an orange color. So because I redefined it, but only inside of the one box, it's only going to overwrite or affect the primary color that's being used here. And let's build upon this a little bit. Inside of the one box, I have an H3 and I also have an A tag. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to nest a couple of other rules. So here what I'll do is I'll make a nested rule for the box one A tag and set it to primary color as well as the box one H3 and set it also to primary color. So what's gonna happen is these are going to now take on the orange color. So if we save this page and we refresh it, you're gonna see that box one now has a orange heading and an orange link. So these things have been redefined based on our variable, and this is a local variable in that it's being defined inside of this. So let's make some changes to the other two boxes as well. I'm going to come into my two box and we're going to set the value for primary color here and primary color here is gonna to change to a yellow shade. 
Now once again, we already have a rule here for background color and it's setting it to be primary color of 0.6, so 60% of this yellow shade is what we're gonna get. And then I'm going to do another nested rule for my H3 that's within the two box. And we're simply going to set the color to the primary color. So just like what we did before. If we save this and we look at the page, you're now gonna see that this box has now been redefined to displaying a yellow color. So that all makes sense. It's pretty much the same thing that we did on the one box. So in this way, you can augment your page and augment the values that the variables are using depending on if you're using the global or local scope.